Hey everyone, and welcome to Baka Reviews. In this episode, we're going to be reviewing My Neighbor Totoro. Totoro. Yep. No, not that Totoro. <laughs> <laughs> if we're reviewing that, oh, there is a movie of that. We should review that. Oh, we but should. I haven't seen that movie. I'm talking about the Steins Gate movie, if people haven't guessed. But... No, we're reviewing My Neighbor Totoro, a Ghibli film from... Is it 1988? 1988, yes. So one of the earliest Ghibli films, at least as far as, far as I could find. So I think this is also the earliest one that we have watched today. Mm -hmm. So anyways, let's dive on in. Uh, what did you guys think generally of the movie? Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I have some thoughts on it, but I want to see what you guys think. I liked the general premise, like just the family moving into new area type thing like it always mm -hmm. makes for a good just i guess family movie dynamic yeah and i don't know that's about it i like the artwork <laughs> <laughs> not a lot good to say about it uh, it felt incomplete kind of sucked what do you think Louise? i didn't like this is my least favorite anime movie i've ever seen really it's not great you know also it's really hyped it's like this is one of the greatest ghibli movies yeah. of all time it is not it sucks nothing happens i had the same thought going through this entire movie i was like i was waiting for that scene that was gonna make it like the ghibli film because that's what everybody makes it out to be it's like mm -hmm. it's the ghibli film yeah like whenever you say when you talk ghibli to somebody they're like, oh, have you seen My Neighbor Totoro? Yeah, it's like, like no. Spirited Away and My Neighbor Totoro, yeah. like the big ones. Okay, Spirited Away is justified in its hype. Level. Spirited Away. So this movie feels like a prequel to Spirited Away. It does. And this movie feels like it was crawling into its like hole of death so that Spirited Away could be a masterpiece. And, My neighbor Totoro walked when yeah, Spirit Away flew. But it didn't even walk. It just like stumbled into a hole. Nothing happens in this movie. Not Totoro at all. Okay. It, it would be fine if nothing happened, but the way they did it, it felt like something was supposed to happen. Yeah. The main characters were boring and annoying. They just never stopped, stopped screaming. Yeah. It felt like actual toddlers. Yeah. Or like actual little children, which I guess is realistic. It's, yeah, it is. But it's just terrible, like, but like it just didn't go anywhere. So it just kind of felt like annoyance for no reason. Yeah, it felt very odd to watch a movie where you're like, I'm, I was actually trying to picture it as like a kid. I was trying to like picture if I was a kid watching this, like how I'd feel. Yeah. Honestly, this movie would make me really bored. Yeah, I think I'd be bored watching this as a kid, too. Like, I'm surprised it's so highly rated as a Ghibli film. Like, it's not bad, like, yeah. for the quality of it. It just feels like the story is like a nothing burger. Yeah. Yeah, because, I don't know, to me, man, I told you guys about this. It felt like, like with Totoro, I don't know what he was supposed to be, cat bear troll thing. <laughs> uh, tree spirit. It felt like it would have been a lot more entertaining if instead of Totoro always being the thing that the girls just like encountered other spirits, like just have it be one of those just low key relaxed movies where they just go from meeting thing to thing and making friends with, you know, like all these different spirits and yeah. stuff instead of just one spirit. Basically, yeah. You know, kind of like spirited away. How like the girl makes friends with like everything that she's interacting with, or at least tries to. Yeah. You know, you could have that and it would have flowed exactly the same. The ending would have been the same way because I don't know. They made friends with the cat bus thing, which is horrifying, by the way. <laughs> um, the but, cat bus is, is like, but, you know, it's really that could, have, that could have been something of its own thing. And it would have <laughs> made sense to, you know, the story and just it could have had a wider cast of characters, I guess, in yeah. that sense, instead of just having it be on this one kind of boring character. Yeah. 
The cat bus wasn't that bad until it like wrapped itself around a tree. And then you're just like, look at this horrifying, no, ultrish on, like monster thing. That's it just, walking on the power lines and just like yeah. glaring down. I was like, oh lord, it's a demon. Yeah. <laughs> it felt, this movie felt like there was a giant chunk of it in the middle missing. Yeah. Like when the movie, you know, I think a part, sorry not to interrupt. Oh, no, you're fine. I think part of it is it didn't pull at the heartstrings like it should have. Mm -hmm. A movie like this should be a feel good movie. Yeah. Slash, there is some tragedy to eke out some emotions out of you. That should have been like with there should have been more emphasis, I think, on the mother being ill. Right. Yeah. And it's like, it's wonderful that she's made it you know she was getting better but along that path there should have been those things of the kids i don't know maybe being more worried about their mom right like mm -hmm. i felt that had more weight of the little girl when she heard the old lady say well if she ate some of my food she'd feel better you know and probably cure yeah her. it's like okay now we're gonna start getting in the meat of it and it's like it was the end yeah instead of it having being the kids wanting to make their mom better have more emphasis sorry have more emphasis on the stuff like that like the dad didn't i mean it would have even been i think a little bit more interesting it's like the dad was keeping upbeat for his girls and yep. happy because he had his girls but it would have been this would have been that one time where just a little bit of seeing not necessarily a dark side of it but just a little bit more serious side because even kids movies do have that to tell you it's like hey this is what this is what adults go through when they're doing yeah, exactly. dealing yeah. with stuff. This is what you go through if you have to deal with this stuff. I was I was I saw a comment from Miyazaki and it felt like he was trying to make a like a nostalgia film mm -hmm. where it's supposed to bring you back to your memories as a childhood. And for me, it's funny because my mom was actually in the hospital a ton. When I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I still didn't even feel like nostalgic about it. <laughs> yeah. Like the most nostalgic I felt was like when they went to the trip to the hospital, like it was like a half day trip. Like, yeah. That felt nostalgic. But like all the other times, it was just like, oh, like it felt like they just rushed through each moment. Like if they would have yeah. lingered on the moment where they were the mom, like they thought the mom was like getting like really sick or something at that moment, mm -hmm. they would have lingered on that and used that as like a emotional like pendulum to shift the movie into like the downturn yeah. where maybe like Totoro had to like get them there quickly. Maybe Totoro had yeah. to get them there quickly. And then it turns out everything was okay after all, or maybe like Totoro decided to be the neighbor Totoro and like heal the, the, mo or the mom yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Like I, that, it, that carries over to a lot of things because even like when the old lady, this neighbor tells him, Oh, you've seen soot sprites. It never goes on anything else. Like you, yeah. you would think it's like, oh, here's going to be our MacGuffin character. It's going to kind of explain like yeah. she'll be that friend to the kids that they'll be like, oh, well, we've seen this or did this. And, nope. you know, and she'll be the character that nothing like, like that. She tells, just like, yeah, she's just there and loses the kids. Yeah. Or like when the um, <laughs> youngest sister goes to the school, that would have been a great, I guess, kind of like that's your like cute frame yep. of stuff of like. Here's the kids playing with her and letting her feel like she fits in with them. Right. You know, and made something so you. Some interaction with like the school kids. Or yeah. Something. So you like, care more about the character. Yeah. And stuff. But it just. It felt like the characters were like cranked on happy and they never really changed much outside of when the older sister got mad at the younger sister. Yeah, that felt pretty yeah. realistic. So I was like a they're, they're very young in the film. I think it's like 8 and 10 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but even the dad is like but, it's cranked eternally unhappy. There's no depth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mostly just the only nostalgia I got from this is when I saw Totoro with a uh with an umbrella flying around. It was like it's Mary Poppins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, um, well, there's like that scene, not to interrupt. You, yeah, go there's ahead. that scene in the middle where they plant the trees mm -hmm. and it, they have the dream of Totoro helping them grow. Yeah. And stuff. I wanted the rest of the movie being them going on an adventure of Totoro, like 
if yeah, in that yeah. weird just spirit stuff. Yeah, so I was disappointed yeah. when they woke up. I was like, oh. Or just like more things like that. Like it yeah. happens once. It's not that exciting. They just kind of fly around a little bit and then it's just Instead like, and then they have it be, oh, this is what you're, we're going to be doing every night and have like yeah. three adventures or something. Yeah, maybe that's what made the girls feel better from their mom is like they have an adventure every night with Totoro or something like now, that. I had heard a long time ago, maybe it was in a video, that possibly the whole thing of Totoro was the girls, in a way, dealing with trauma of this and that he was an imaginary friend. It could be because they do but, reference that's the same thing as in the storybook. Yeah, mm-hmm. but at the same time, there's nothing really giving any hint to it. Beyond no, that. it's yeah. just, oh, this is a troll like in the storybooks. Cool. Every movie does. Yeah, yeah. Totoro just doesn't do anything he's a good like character design he's kind of funny and the cat bus is kind of a funny idea too but like if totoro i was waiting for totoro and the girls to go on the cat bus together and it never happens maybe he takes them so yeah like you see in the list of stuff the swamp the graveyard yeah maybe he would take them on his normal whatever spirits there was just kind of like a whole bunch of nothing going on from just like a storytelling perspective, there wasn't much here. Like there was no setup. There was just like the soot sprites and then they disappear and then you never hear from them again. Yeah. And then there was like Totoro kind of shows up and then he doesn't really do anything except get the cat bus to take them to their mom. And there's like this whole thing about their mom's going to be is really sick or whatever from that like note they got. And then it just turns out she's fine. And then the one girl is like missing or whatever. And then they just find her and the shoe wasn't hers. It was just like a whole bunch of stuff that happened that just led nowhere. And there was just zero tension. So he didn't well, care and, about and it anything. It wasn't really like, you know how there's those movies or shows that it's like they're not really about anything. Mm-hmm. But even still, you can relax and just yeah, you can kind of vibe with the characters like, in Spirited Away, because this movie is very similar to Spirited Away in that they don't have like big plot like in-depth yeah, stuff just going on it's scenario. just kind of like different scenarios and whatever but spirited away has a lot of things this movie doesn't and the first thing is like the initial going into that one village that the main character spirited away goes in and then like all the spirits come out and that's like this big cool moment and you just see all this stuff going on like this never had a cool moment there was like you meet totoro and it's kind of lame it's just like this the- little coolest moment Hole. was when the tree grew yeah and then like, like it was like a giant tree that encased like over their house i was like that's gonna be so cool yeah. when the dad finds out and then they wake up it's gone and it's just like, nothing oh, yeah what so there was like that moment and it was super short too like you see him flying around it's like oh this is gonna be cool and then yeah. it's just not and then the other thing spirited away has is just like something that matters where it's like her parents got turned into pigs and all this stuff like and an this angle. movie just doesn't have anything it's just yeah, like kids waiting around for their mother to come there's home. not even a, a tip of i'm gonna become the greatest whatever insert yeah. objective yeah. there's no moment of like them helping their mother or helping with anything the movie doesn't change at all with the only difference that totoro and the cat bus makes in the movie is that they put a corn on the windowsill of the mother's room yes that's yeah that was see, literally the to me, if you took out totoro if you took out the cat bus and just inserted random ghosts and yaokai or whatever for different scenes that would have been cool it would have yeah. made more sense oh we're out in the country there's all these old shrines here's the spirits that live in the shrine right <laughs> they're you know nice or whatever yeah like when there's not a main like focused plot there's got to be something like cool or interesting happening and there just wasn't anything cool or yeah. interesting it was just i mean the artwork was nice yeah the well, artwork that was, was gonna nice. be my next thing so we kind of definitely went over all of our complaints and just the general film i'm filing our complaint. dislike of it but i do want to say because i don't want to be like those people that just complain about the film and call it bad it's hey, not to be exactly fair bad. we don't usually actually complain about the exactly film. so that's yeah. what this is our first time kind of being very negative i mean i was kind of negative on ponyo but but I guess the next part I want to talk about is for you guys. And I have a couple compliments. What's at least a couple things that you thought was like really cool for this film? I loved the artwork. Honestly, mm-hmm. the one like I love the house. 
the house and the bus stop and the shrine where the one daughter like or where the daughters like take cover out of the rain. Yeah. I loved all those scenes because I love like cozy. Yep. Yeah. I actually, as I was watching it, the scene towards the beginning where they stop on the living room, it's just like the table with the teapot and stuff. Mm -hmm. I tried finding that to make it my lock screen. Oh, yeah. Like those are what I liked about. I've seen a lot of things that I've seen as like that I've noticed are like have been turned into lo-fi like yeah. loop animations like the dad sitting there at his desk that actually is a video somewhere, somewhere yeah on the internet. for mm-hmm. sure um <clears throat> i did like the scenery and i think that was kind of the thing that made me a little disappointed is like i loved the the world everything was cozy it looked like a place you could just be a stranger that yep. walked into town and everyone would be your best friend but that's about it. I mean, it had nice music and stuff. Yeah. And just it had good atmosphere. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a couple of scenes for me. It's definitely the bus stop scene. Yeah. If it would have emphasized more that mis- mystery, kind of that mysterious that vibe. being somewhat afraid, but yet curious. Yeah. That that whole scene had a little bit of tension in it. Mm-hmm. like not horror movie tension where you thought oh, like Toto was going to eat them but it was like you didn't know what was going to happen exactly and it felt very nice mm-hmm. it was it was good it felt it had emotional tension it had like an emotional well, lever the girls were didn't know what to do because the oldest had just not seen Toto. yeah exactly. Toto didn't know how to interact with them yes yeah he's never it felt with awkward it but was friendly it was mm-hmm. cool and that I wish that whole scene was spanned out throughout the entire movie yeah. Instead of it being just like a one and done, which felt like the rest of the movie. Was. Yeah. But also the music was really good. I like the music for this. Uh, the opening and ending song, maybe because I watched it dubbed, but that definitely felt like a bad translation. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah. Yeah, that happened. And like I was watching it with my family. Yeah. Um, And the audio for some reason split on the oh. end credits. So like, make it stop. <laughs> what about you Weez? the the opening was weird it was like i wasn't expect at first i was wondering if it was like skip to the end or something oh, yeah. because the opening is like like just credits yeah it was really weird it was like is this actually the beginning of the movie but uh the moment i did like the the bus stop moment too like that was cool the only the other main scene i liked was just when they first when um may the younger girl meets Totoro the first time by going to that little like cave thing in the forest that was really cool how like going through it once um she like found the big tree and everything and then going through it again it just like goes in a circle it was cool it was very like Narnia-esque of just like you go through one way to get there and then next time it just it's not there at all that was a cool that, that was a cool like like thing yeah um I like the idea of just like this house and then there's just a little tunnel of trees that sometimes leads to like a magical area yeah like that's pretty cool see i think what happened with this with it being their first movie i think this this is, was was this their first movie I, or one of them i think and my, there might have been i think it's like movie. the second maybe there was one before this i know but this has the opposite of um uh princess mononoke yeah Princess Mononoke was like, we're going to go over every little detail and give you this epic. And it's going to be a long haul movie. And it felt like a long haul movie. It was good. Like it was rewarding. But this is the exact opposite. Yeah, it did feel the opposite of. Like, I enjoyed the long haul with Princess Mononoke. And I was like, no, don't end. Stay. Right. Yeah. This it's like. Don't go. Oh, you're all gone already. That That's what it felt like. It felt like you, you wanted the characters to stick around, but they just they were gone. They're just gone. Yep. it was the end. Yeah, it kind of felt disappointing because everybody was like the na- my neighbor Totoro is like the definitive like Ghibli film to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at least all the people I met. I think part of what it is is the fact Totoro as a character is a totally 100% original character. He's not yeah. based off yeah. anything. Right. Other than like some animal references. He is him and his little, I don't know what they were, little Totoros. Yeah. We're all 100% original. Right. 
So I think that might be why it's partially such a big thing and why it's kind of their flagship character. Yeah, Maybe. it could be. That's true. I do like the idea of this also being in the Spirited Away universe because it just fits so well. Like, oh, for sure. Totoro's just going on the bus to like go to the Spirited Away like right. sauna and um, the like so sprites and everything just being like, it's a fun fact. Exactly the Probably same. most Studio Ghibli stuff could be tied. I'm in pretty together. sure most oh, yeah. of it is, but like this feels really connected, and this definitely feels like a prequel to Spirited Away. It feels like this kid went on this adventure with the spirit spiritual realm, and like these kids went on a different. I do have adventure. one final complaint, and this is not to the movie itself. This is with all movies when they do this because it drives me up a wall, up the wall. Unless you are doing a timeless setting like um, Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events, mm -hmm. there's no set defined time. You see stuff from the 50s, you see stuff from the 60s, you see modern. Stuff. Yeah, it's supposed to be whimsical storybook. Kind of define what era you're setting your story in. Oh, yeah. Because I had to look it up. I didn't, 1950. Yeah, it's in the 1950s. I'm is like, it? why does everything yeah. look so old and dilapidated? It's like, oh, this is the 50s. I was under the impression it was the 80s during the recession. No, it wasn't. Yeah. I, that's what I thought at first, because they moved out to the country to get away from city prices. I figured yeah. it would be during like the era that it was made. Yeah. So Yeah, that's no, it's the 50s, and it's like, I, I just would like, you know, you don't have to have bold text. You could have like a letter from someone yeah. or just a calendar or something. Yep. But yeah, um, I don't want to just continue a whole podcast. We just like bash on a film. Oh, we're uh, we're fine. This is our one bash. Well, it's like we don't really <laughs> don't have much really else have to say. So, yeah, no. And I, I don't want to artwork, ramble on. Artwork is time. beautiful. So, it's not, I mean, it's a great kids movie. My nieces had a blast watching it. Yep. They love Totoro. They really love the sprites. And you know, honestly, if I was a 10 or four year old, like that's in the film, I probably would have enjoyed this movie a lot more. And I'd probably have more fonder memories of it. But I think it also could be the fact that we've kind of went backwards. We went from the best yeah, movie. That is true. Backwards. That is very true. So so it's like we're kind of I, I know I was setting it to the standard like Spirited Away or like Howl's Moving Castle with right. like the artwork and stuff. Well, we have yeah. some other ones like Nasca the Wind coming up and stuff, too. I'm looking forward to that. That is the, the first, first manga series. That is the first Nasca the, of the Wind. That is the first Ghibli movie. Cool. Well, we'll see what we think of that then, because that's also supposed to be more of an adult film as well. Mm. As far as I know. Yeah, I mean, the manga kind of was yeah that was dark for as a kid but anyways <laughs> that was a review of my neighbor totoro we have been baka talk are we doing... gonna give it a score oh frick yeah <laughs> we should <laughs> all right wheeze well you thought of it so go um ahead. one last note is that my girlfriend watched it and she said she liked it but Your girlfriend doesn't count just just kind of <laughs> like that was cute more than like this was a really good movie. The response it was you can get we out both, of your girlfriend. We both love it, liked Ponyo a lot more. Gotcha. So all right. Well yeah, that's good to know. It's not for me, this movie is like a five. Out of out of ten. Okay. Out of one hundred. No, out of ten. What about you, Ron Cat? I'll give it I'm gonna give it four little Totoros out of ten. I okay. because here's the thing. I like movies that aren't particularly about anything or just have, you know, low key life mm -hmm. references and it didn't give any, you know, like yeah. I, here's a prime example for anyone that's ever seen it. Secondhand Lions. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, even though you're getting older, but the movie itself, like it's a lot of just scenario to scenario. Yeah, I love the movie. It's a deep movie. But it's a relaxing movie. It's a fun movie. And you don't feel disappointed at the end. Like nothing happened. Yeah. Yeah. This is you. like, oh boy, here we go. Yep. Disappointment. <laughs> I will give it. I'm going to say 4.5 out of 10. 10 I, what? Corn? Totoro's? Um, silt Acor rice. Acorns? Or dust sprites. What are they called? Is it silt sprites? Silt sprites. Suit sprites. Yeah. So that's why I'm going to give it. Because I was kind of bored. Yeah. I honestly started looking at YouTube while I was watching the movie. Like, I was, I paid attention, obviously. Yeah. But it was just like, I was bored enough where I wanted to do something else while I was doing it. So, but yeah. So that's about it. 
sorry for the downer one, but sometimes we're going to have that. Sometimes we're going to really like the movie. Let Our us... next movie is Trigun Rumble in the Badlands. And I'm excited yeah. about that one. So, But anyways, we'll catch you all in the next one. Please hit subscribe if you like this and like the video. Let and... us know what you thought of My Neighbor Totoro or yeah. why you like it. This Do you have childhood get... memories of it? This is where we get death threats. <laughs> possibly but i'm prepared for them i got a baseball bat in the corner <laughs> <laughs> all right see you all later jamio bye